Dreams are the seeds of action. We don't do well to remember that. A single-handed race around the world. I've already sent him my entry form. Are you serious? What? Alone on a boat for nine months. You're either drunk or mad. Well, we should have another drink so that we can rule out madness. Hi, this is Irene Mo from the Fine Carpet. We are here at the world premiere of The Mercy at the Curzon in Mayfair. Why did you decide to do this film? I did a movie. Oh. Um, initially I did it because of James Marsh, who I'd done uh, Theory of Everything with, um, and really liked him very much, and uh, he asked me to do it before I knew anything about it, and then I did a bit of research and watched the documentaries and read the book, um, and was just like... Yes, of course. I, 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 there was no. I think I decided to do it straight away, um, in, in, in the moment. And I played Rodney Holworth, who was the press agent of uh, Donald Crowhurst, and is kind of ostensibly the the, the, the villain of the piece. Really, is uh, a bit of comic relief and, and the villain, if anything, uh, in that he, he's the guy who pushes um, Crowhurst towards his fate when. Um, when Crowhurst is, is having second thoughts about embarking upon this trip, uh, Rodney convinces him that it's the right thing to do, even though it's obviously not the right thing to do. Because I couldn't believe um, the story. I didn't. We've never done. We've done. Been lucky enough to do quite a few movies, but I've never done a true story. And the notion of a guy setting off around the world because he thinks he can win this race was amazing to me. I love the notion of the power of dreams. You know, just pursuing your goals. I think that's very romantic, and it's uh, it's got to be encouraged. Why this film? Um, you know, I saw a documentary about ten years ago called Deep Water, and I walked out of the theater, and it just didn't leave my mind for a very long time. And I think I'd like to find characters to write about who are complicated, and Donald Crowhurst to me is immensely complicated because there is something about him that is very heroic and then there is something about him that is flawed and I wanted to explore that and he seemed a man alone at sea is is in itself a metaphor and so I wanted to, to di dive into that. Also I sail and so I wanted to write a movie about the ocean and about sailing and the experience of being alone. As a producer what would you need to happen so you can say, yeah, I'm so happy with this film, I'm so happy I got involved? You know, on this one, I'm really proud to have made it because I think this sort of um, more challenging stories don't often get made. And I think every film is a bit of a miracle when it actually gets made. Um, so for me and Graham Broadbent at Blueprint Pictures to have made a movie like this, with Colin Firth, James Marsh, Rachel Weisz, doesn't get any better. And this chap here is a very clever writer. So that helps as well. So you got a good script. Script is everything, in my opinion, and the actors, obviously. But if you have a good script, then that's so important. Good script, you get a director, you get some actors, but it all starts with it all starts with the producers coming up with a silly idea. But this is a proper. I think it's a proper. It's a great story. Yeah, there's always in any project that's based on reality, there's a lot of research, and so I spent a fair amount of time reading old newspaper articles and other accounts and sort of familiarizing myself but at some point you have to leap off and ask yourself about your own inspiration and what about this character is are you connecting with because I think for all of us this is a very personal story I feel great pity for him when I when I I mean I've not seen this cut of the film so I don't know we can't talk about the film itself but we you know the, this whole story and uh, the, the deep water documentary. I felt enormous pity for him. I mean, it seems an extremely delusional man, and I'm not sure what he was thinking. It seems inconceivable to us that he would have carried on beyond the point he did, that he didn't go home when he could have done, that he could have cut his losses and just admitted that he'd failed. Um, but so. I, th I think there's possibly more to understand about him. I think it's why we made the film, and I think it's why people might be compelled to go away and read more about him. It's great. I, I advise anyone to read the book. It's a wonderful book 
uh, written about this to, to get to get more into it. Because that's what we all did. We had the script and we've seen the documentary, we've seen this film. But there's there's, there's more to uh, dive into there. So hopefully other people will go and look into it further. How many scuba revisions did you have to do? Wow. Um, so many. I, I don't even know. I'd have to go back and look at my computer. But, you know, we started this movie probably eight years ago. And so, and you know, I was writing all the way up until the last minute. So, you know, you're always kind of cutting and changing and learning new things. And, you know, when you have actors like this, you have to listen to them. And if, you know, if Colin says the scene isn't working for me, then it's on me to try and make it better with him. And how did that happen when he said, you know, could we change the scene a little bit? Did he bring in his ideas and it was like collaboration? Colin, in particular, had been an incredible student of the story. And so he knew as much as I did, if not more, about Donald Crower's history. So he was a very, very good kind of collaborator in terms of making changes. And, and when you start condensing the story, figuring out, you know, what you can get rid of, what you need to keep to really tell, you know, both an accurate story but also a dramatic portrayal that's going to be entertaining. When you pick actors, obviously the director will pick, when the director picks the actors, do you have any saying in which actors you want in? Well, we had, yeah, we all chat about it. We actually, Colin was um, very keen on the script at script form. Um, so so we had Colin attached before we found a director, but I just thought he was such a perfect um, mixture of Crowhurst, and I just thought he was the perfect match, really. The media, I think, can sometimes be responsible for people uh, taking on more than they can, uh, you know. I think people get a false idea of themselves sometimes because of uh, how the media may portray them. Uh, um, I don't know as much as I can say about that right now. I think I think we have. We've done, we've sort of, you know, obviously the main parts, but you're always looking for something fresh and interesting, and you work with these casting directors, and they really know who the best people are and who's going to nail it in terms of the other characters on the page. Did you have any amazing uh, parts that you did, any amazing scenes on set that you said to yourself, oh my God, I really love doing this scene, can we just do it again? Um, yeah, most of the scenes actually, because James Marsh is very nice. He allows a lot of improvisation, uh -huh. and, uh, and and he's, he's, he's very kind of very free. So that was always nice to do most most stuff again. I mean, there was a scene in the pub where I'm reading out the newspapers, where I was just allowed to do what I wanted. But that, that was the case with James, even in theory of everything, where he asked me to in improvise quantum physics, um, which is not, not, not easy, but um, yeah, yeah, let's not talk about that. But, um, but almost everything with James because of that, because I love improvisation and to be able to do it in front of the camera, and especially with this character who it was kind of comical, it was a, a very enjoyable. What's your favourite scene in the film? Golly, uh, I think I think the I think I really really like the scene when whenever whenever I'm watching Colin, I'm thinking of Rachel, and whenever I think watching Rachel, I'm thinking of Colin. I love their sort of dynamic between the two of those and the kids as well. I get rather emotional at the um, all the cinema when they're taking their own cine film of it. I love that stuff. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where we are going to have a lot more things for you next time. Life must be lived. So the question becomes, what can you do to give it all meaning? Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.